the how to calculate the tokens so this is a, uh, a simple c language syntax i i beg your pardon this is p should be small p this is a mistake so this is simple but if it the what what are the number of tokens so this printf is token number one this is a keyword uh, this opening play press is a another number of token the whole string this is very important the whole string is a token okay so this is token number three mm, and this comma is another token and then here i is another token and this comma is uh, another this semicolon is another token and uh, i think yeah you, you this is this is actually the uh, string so uh, this is one token one two three four five uh percentage uh, here is there percentage uh, this is whole is as a token this is comma is a token again i is a token then ampersand is a token is a and then again i is a token of closing brace and semicolon so there are number of tokens is 10. any confusion how many number of tokens please check yourself this is printf is a keyword opening brace is a token single quote double quote quote uh, this whole thing is a to token. Don't take it as double quote as a token. The whole string is a token. This comma is a token. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The total number of tokens are ten. Shushish with agreed? Agreed? Yes, and sir. Okay, great. So this is, you just please count it. So take another example stick another this is very same, same type of example say if you have a like this command what is the number of token so here one two all this is three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so this is eleven so please don't take it. This plus plus is on taken one token. M percent, M percent, one token. These are taken because this is a pointer. This is C. The pointer, pointer to pointer, pointer to pointer. The three counts here. This is count. So this kind of question will come in your. This is your internal on tomorrow, 30th September. There is a uh, test on Google Form, not Moodle. Uh, you'll please eight o'clock. Uh, okay. So this is one thing I must tell you. Yeah, I mentioned you that say this is what is AST. This is another name of parsing tree, abstract syntax tree. I have told you the difference between uh, abstract syntax tree and the parsing tree. Uh, parsing tree, uh, parsing tree generally in compiler is abstract syntax tree where the operation comes at the node and leaves at the uh, values. So uh, I have also yesterday told you that symbol table uh, initiation of symbol table creation is done at the uh, lexical analysis, uh, but the filling up is taking up the after the syntax analysis, even at the uh, checking a semantic analysis. So uh, symbol table is very vital. So symbol table it is a collection of tables I, if that I also told, and as per the scope, every function C C or C++, every functions, uh, every uh, every functions, they have their, every scope, even that they have their own symbol table because variable definition, uh, everything changes as per the scope of this thing. Okay. So let it will be clear in the next slide. If you have any question, please tell me. Here, I wish to show you. See here, uh, this is a symbol table uh, of a C++. I think it is a C++. Yes, I think it's a, it's a C++. Uh, see here, uh, we uh, it is uh, first is a the foo class foo, or you can take it as I think it's a yeah it's a C, it is a it is C++. Yeah, because if it is a if it's a class foo. Uh, say that is his own symbol table and what are the entries are there say value field test uh, like this is a is a is a type integer return because why it is return because return this is and uh, 
and then it is a, a set value then set value had its own symbol table here there it is defined this uh, v variable uh, uh, and another set value this, this is the set value you have the c variable here and there is a block here is a block this block is mentioned is another symbol table and uh, it, class bar symbol table it is not shown here so i'm just repeating this is a symbol table at this level and this is the set value the symbol table it is it is it is connected to this set value here so this is a another uh, symbol table the symbol table it contains what are the things so the type all other properties and uh, if you have a, a test why the test have a, we have a symbol table because uh, it is a variable b is used uh, so uh, here value test so this is a block so because it is a block within a program so we have another symbol table okay so this is three symbol tables and in the set value also another block so there is another symbol table okay but uh, class bar another symbol table it is not shown here so uh, summarily i am telling you symbol table not a single monolithic table it is a consist of uh, collected tables and generally it is uh, it the technology is used not array it can be used by array and all this but generally it is the hash technology is used you know hashing in data structure uh, but hash give the performance i go to the next slide if you have any question you can tell me this is a basic symbol table and next slide yeah this is another symbol table it is i i am taking it from java so uh, your presentation uh, uh, first presentation you can take this kind of symbol table from your favorite language and how it is and i'll tell you about uh, what it can be your various presentation after the class but you can take this as an example uh, python i have not taken you can take uh, this is a java program and you see here um, if you calculation see here the uh, in and count so we are taking this one is highlighted so this is the first symbol table and this comes it here so next higher scope and the higher scope is global is here so it is shown in differently uh, this is highlighted means this is i am in current symbol table then in the class is another symbol table and this is the highest symbol table so uh, use this like it's stack of a symbol tables when the scope is entered the each symbol table is put on the top of the stack excellent because you know like a slack variable uh, you can uh, most recent thing should be on the top of the stack so this is this is one strategy you can use this is i have told you uh, about the symbol table in java then yes this is now i i am i am telling you the what are the technologies can be in symbol table see here see here the uh, because symbol table will be in a memory not in the hard disk and it would be uh, all phases from uh, your lexical analysis then the uh, syntax if the program is okay then syntax analysis the semantic analysis then the code generation two levels of code generation you know one level of code generation is machine independent and another was is machine dependent various code generation then how to make the code more efficient and all these things the symbol table is vital it is it it gives and back given forth information from all stages of compiler or interpreter so symbol table is very it should be pretty fast and so uh, we should not store the symbol table in one place it should be at the uh, function level at the scope level but they should be connected and uh, not only that a program can have many variables so it should you should get the particular variable preferably o one time so that is the reason you see if you use the hashing technology then uh, most of the times you can get this kind of performance this is the highest performance because you remember whenever you are working in the python and uh, that is interpreter and you, 
it, the language is different because of interpreter it is a bit slower so your it should be preferably should be mentioned uh, by done this hashing because when it, python inter executes code line by line so it may be preferred the symbol table choice but other technologies is also used as per the uh, situation events that can that can be a uh, small uh, project you can take uh, for presentation how to manipulate symbol or what is actually being done in various languages okay so i go to the next slide okay this i have already covered already covered this is a symbol table this is i have already covered now i am going to the this is i am all taking from the ahu of corpus so this is now i am going to highlight another slide yeah please wait any question in the meantime please please refer any question this uh, slide we will go again and again uh, this is the parsing uh, the top down parsing we have started because top down parsing is can be easily understood yeah, yeah so this is the main table the top down parsing we have started with top down parsing when you start from the start variable start you go uh, you start variable goes to right hand string and you try to you try to elaborate on the first variable from the left hand side either from the left hand side it is a terminal then you go for a next variable and if from next variable you see the what are the production rules then you fire one at a time and uh, then you see the what are the string is coming uh terminal and remember the terminal uh, the what are the terminals are coming that string should match your target's tokens if doesn't match then you can backtrack and uh, take another option of your expansion so that is a with backtracking on top down it is easier understood but very difficult to in programmatically in computer because here i have shown you today uh, i can um, is a is equal to ap then i am not getting the wad then again go back and take the another root uh, a a to a uh, then we can manage the situation but if we have any programming language maybe 1000 program 1000 uh, uh, rules uh, this kind of rules the context free grammar and you done some mistake somewhere and you found the mistakes maybe 100 derivation then you can go back again and try all this option and uh, machine will that your program definitely will hang okay it is not possible so backtracking is absolutely no no but it looks very uh, tempting to by backtracking so backtracking not only top down parsing in in bottom up parsing also mm, we backtracking we should avoid so whatever parsing we go when i we try to match the tokens to the as it would be always should be one step and sure step okay so how to do this the, then it is come the predictive parsing predictive parsing is basically nothing but llk grammar so why i am mentioning llk llk means k look ahead type k look ahead symbols generally we have we will we'll prove it that if we can look ahead only one symbol that is good enough because if we look at two symbols your parsing table will be huge parsing table is nothing but another table in your memory so that parsing table i have already given a hint what is a what is kind of parsing table parsing table is if you see the terminal there and you fire the production rule which so it is the left hand side uh, the terminal and right hand and top side also your variables so which variable which uh, whenever you see it which production rules the your uh, cell each cell should be filled up with one and only one production rule so there will be no confusion looking at your terminal and variable there so you can fire it so that is called the parsing table if 
if LLO, if this is not mentioned, that is that is your first of sigma i and first of sigma z not shy, then we will see that your parsing table contains multiple entries, more than one entries of your production rule and then again this confusion will come which production rule to fire. So that is if, if you show that your your first calculation and how to make your first calculation you take a um, you, uh, first calculation you have to take only for all variables and all the right hand side the string. So all the right the here all the right hand side the string should be shy uh, first thing and first thing is what are the terminals comes first? If that that particular string goes to epsilon, then your first of A should be first of sigma 2. Remember, this is another trick is there. So maybe your sigma 1, after, uh, after expansion, it goes to epsilon. Then your uh, what are the things coming after uh, sigma 1 in other production rules? Uh, that will be your first. So I will give some such examples later so just remember that this should be unique and it's here i have mentioned that way if any non-terminal x can derive empty string then first of x and follow of x should be shy okay then if these two rules are there then your your this predictive person this predictive person will be fully predictive no recursion and another thing i have told you this is completely another different thing no left recursion should be there what is left recursion if you left hand side one variable right hand side start with the same variable and that 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 will not be there it is not related with backtracking it is left recursion means your computer may uh, the program may go berserk um, and may go haywire not only direct left recursion so i have mentioned what is direct what is indirect so both the uh, recursion should be there but one very good thing about this this left recursive grammar can be little tweaking, little bit changing, can be made as a non-left recursive grammar. But one thing I must tell you, if this left recursion is not at all a problem in bottom-up parsing, that is one great thing. So uh, why unnecessarily I change the natural uh, context-free grammar rule? That is one valid case for bottom-up parsing. Bottom-up parsing is uh, difficult, little bit difficult to explain and to teach you uh, because it is the toughest and there are several versions of there but there also we'll use this first and follow function so that is the this first and follow function is very vital to understand the parsing ll1 parsing uh, also in bottom up parsing this first and follow function should be used uh, for another reason because uh, that is for the parsing action. Here, fast and follow are using, it's vital. If it doesn't follow, it will not be top down parsing. But uh, these two rules is not necessary in bottom up parsing. So that is the reason bottom up parsing, uh, relatable grammar are more general because only thing backtracking should always avoid, uh, should be avoided. But left recursion is not at all a problem. Even the right recursion is also not a problem. You can guess that it might be right recursion. That is also not a problem. So bottom-up parsing is much, much, uh, much, much uh, easier for machine. But parsing table is generally huge. And that is nowadays it is not a problem because we have a, enough uh, memory. We have a, and so we can manage the parsing table. Parsing table is really huge. Maybe, maybe 100 times of the, maybe 100 and 1000 times of the top-down parsing table so parsing table in top down parsing is you can make it by hand made you can but here it has to be generated by a, another program that program is called yet another compiler compiler one small uh, assignment can be given for this lexical analysis lex uh, this free program is available in lex in unix and also maybe in windows and yeah is generally this parsing table is gen it can be generated it can be done by hand, by uh, by hand, top down. But also in top down, you can if you is a is a basically black black box type of a software program. You give you supply your production rules. It will automatically generate the parsing table. Top down, it is not that essential, but 
bottom up parsing it is a must because the parsing table is huge uh, top down parsing i have explained backtracking is absolutely no no then without backtracking it uh, say I, I i wish to remove backtracking then the grammar is might be meaningless so it backtracking cannot be removed sometimes uh, but left recursion can be removed uh, that i will show you the example in our next class friday class and uh, but then comes the predictive parsing if we follow these rules the ll1 parsing is absolutely okay it is the simplest parsing uh, parsing table is a quicker definitely is a quicker than bottom up parsing because parsing table is less number only one entry at each box and then you can ask the question uh, why i sometimes i call ll1 and sometimes i call llk grammar k means k look ahead it is not necessary it can be proven that though the if we go for ll2 grammar we can have more grammar we can parse remember the all the context free grammar are definitely deterministic context free grammar okay but this is a proper subset of deterministic context free grammar not all deterministic context free grammar can be parsed even if uh, so first you have to find a, a single unambiguous grammar so you know the a, a language can have 10 grammars and maybe out of 10 grammar two grammars are unambiguous so we have to take one or two so we have to take that particular unambiguous grammar then we call the language is unambiguous with that particular grammar again then whenever the that rules are there we should check that there should not be any backtracking should not be there so it is not possible for any top down or bottom up parsing if there is a left recursion it can be removed easily then it is fit for ll1 again before jumping to ll1 we have to check this uh, then we can uh, first follow then we can uh, say it if it is okay that is it is then you can make your parsing table and parsing table each entry should have one and only rules that is okay it's, you can go for top down parsing no issue about it explaining the bottom up parsing because bottom up parsing is very tempting because it doesn't need uh, left recursion to be removed uh, so it is another call is a shift reduce grammar there are uh, another operator precedence grammar, LR parsing, SLR, CLR, LLR. Uh, this covers more or less the th for 30 to 40 percent of the course. So uh, we will do it. We can start our next class. I'm open for the, uh, the last day's things. Then we'll proceed to things. Uh, first of all, uh, this this example I take it from the main book, Aho Lamb Schedule Man, page 220, chapter 4. So this is. Uh, you can get this and what uh, the things I just repeat last things what I repeat the this is the grammar I think it is visible the two variables or non terminals are there capital S and A A C is the start symbol and uh, small a B C D is the terminal and these three production rules uh, the production rules are written here and uh, we would prove that this particular uh, grammar is not fit for LL1 grammar. Uh, how to see? So because it has to be LL1 grammar, LL1, what is LL1 grammar? You see, parsing, the main thing is the syntax analysis. The easiest way of parsing to understand is the top-down parsing. The top-down parsing, the two main problem is with backtracking. We, we have yesterday, we have proved that backtracking is not is uh, absolutely we have to avoid because uh, we have said the backtracking at one stage say if you have a production rules say you have a 200 production rules minimum uh, maybe thousand and you uh, every production rules have some alternatives so if we have found say at the 200 step uh, you should have taken certain things at the fifth stage so you have to backtrack backtrack so there is in order amount of time not only it can take uh, in cube time and also space, the memory space, the pointer. So you see, everything is done by here. This compiler things is done by C, C++. So the pointer and all these things. So it will be just hang. So absolutely no backtracking is allowed. So here we have proven that uh, by simple example, we have that we if we can backtrack, say first 
we are our example is how to parse cad so first is always there because you start you get cad from there from a we have two a b and a you can see sir, why uh, a single a why are not taken this one yes if you have taken this symbol then uh, definitely you can get it and no confusion but say you have taken an another one then you have get a cabd then you see it is doesn't match and you have to go back and go back one step fortunately you have one step but if it is a so 100 step you can go back say it any second or third step so this is unfit for this is a the, you can parse it but it can be backtracking on so your backtracking has to be removed okay so then it may maybe totally change grammar and grammar is not possible say backtracking is absolutely not possible at the top down same as a bottom up also in the bottom up also nowhere in parsing we should not allow backtracking so so everything whatever steps we are doing that should be definitive step and that has to be like a Turing machine, deterministic Turing machine or deterministic final step machine or deterministic push down automata, you cannot backtrack. Backtrack is dangerous. Okay. So that thing you cannot do. Uh, another problem I have told that is a left recursion. Mm, that is also, it is without backtracking I mentioned. A left recursion. Yesterday I have shown, told you that any grammar, say we have a grammar like A to capital B A, then B to capital A A or A to again A B like this, the same variable comes at the left side or it can come via, this is one is indirect recursion, one is direct recursion. This is also not absolutely no, no for top down parsing. So that is a other, without, we have to remove back backtracking and we have to remove removable left recursion. But fortunately, removal of recursion, it can be done. It can be done. And there's, there has to be some rules has to be changed in the grammar, but not very much. But this backtracking removal, it may, may not be possible. Okay, so that's it. I have that. Then it will come. If we, if we can avoid, then we have fully predictive, deterministic, top-down parsing with LL1. Okay, now another way you can check it how it, you are gram sure that it can be say or if even if removal that may not fit for LL1. So again, among this grammar, a subset, a proper subset is LL1 grammar. So for LL1 grammar, uh, the what are the rules? The like you have the, like it is a context-free grammar. Remember the context-free grammar. Uh, so uh, this is. A context free grammar, you know, context free grammar, left hand side always a singular variable, unlike context sensitive or regular grammar. So it is a single variable, and you have a string, say so sigma one, sigma, it, is, it can be any string, any string, but you have to uh, calculate the first. This is a, a function, that is, you have to calculate first of these rules. First of these rules should be shy, empty. Then if you, so from the left hand side, if you see a terminal, then you can at once fix the rule. Okay, that is great. That is great. My mobile, uh, I just say sound, I have to mute it. Anything you do not understand, please you can tell me. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so, and I have, okay, great. So, where we are, so this is a, now, we are in now in LL1 grammar. So remember, one thing I must tell you, LL1 grammar doesn't mean that we, if you remove backtracking, if you remove the left recursion, direct or indirect, you it is LL1. No. Then another further checking. This further checking is that if you have this kind of rule, you have to take the first of these, first of these, first of these, first of these, it is a consistent set of what are the terminals in the first. That is the definition of first and they should be disjoint. So first of this rule, first of this rule, first of the, all, so you have to check all variables right hand side, all this, uh, that is, and remember first of terminal you should not check because first of terminal is always a first of terminal. Same follow of terminal you did not to check. So first of the, all the rules of the right hand side, 
that should be shy if any non terminal x or a can derive empty string then first of this and follow up this should be shy so these are two are obvious if they are valid if, if it is okay then you can create a table and that is a, every table has every one entry one and only entry and they, then it is called the top down parsing table it is not do not configure the symbol table is another table parsing table and there is only one and entry one and only one entry so looking up there's a parsing table will be created after the after syntax analysis if it is uh, found a no ambiguous grammar only one parsing tree we call it a, a abstract syntax tree uh, then uh, from there you can get the parsing fully parsing action so and another thing is uh, today we'll cover the top down more and then another portion is a bottom up parsing there is another name of bottom up parsing is the shift reduce parsing why it is called shift reduce it is much better at name bottom up uh, you can say bottom up i can go from here also from left side no bottom up is always comes from the right side it has to predict the rule so that uh, it it reaches this initial from you have to reduce it you have to shift and reduce and you have to reach at the s symbol so that is a shift reduce name is the proper good name there are several variation of bottom up parser uh, these are the llr one the most powerful most powerful llr one but parsing table becomes huge so generally all programmers is llr one 